So we got some bad news this morning. The kind of bad news that you wake up and your cell phone is buzzing about it because people are messaging you directly. That's how bad the news was. It isn't something that I just log on and see the news and get the update. This was something that affected a lot of people that I hang out with in real life and everything. And it was that of the Transformers trading card game, the TCG, announcing that the Titan Masters attack will be the final release of the game and will mark the end of the Transformers TCG. Now this news comes directly from their Twitter account, Facebook page, Instagram, and of course the full statement on the Transformers TCG website itself. It's sad, and they announce here, for over two years, Wizards of the Coast has worked in creating a great action TCG brand with the Transformers TCG. While the retailers and the player community continued to grow, our product offerings didn't meet expectations of a broader fan, fan base to engage further within the brand. Additionally, the current global situation with the big V, and I'm paraphrasing here, pandemic, presented additional hurdles. As such, Titan Masters Attack, released on May 29th, is the game's final TCG release. We are informing our players and retailers that they can make the best decisions regarding to event particip participation and product ordering. The Transformers TCG team wishes to recognize the tremendous effort that fans and retailers put together in building this great community. The Transformers TCG was truly a labor of love for the Wizards team, and we saw enthusiasm and love echoed by the players across the world, says Drew. I, I would talk with Drew, the global brand manager, many times over Twitter, and he was a very uh, big help with me and my situation because the TCG had absolutely no uh, staple or no situation here in the province of Quebec and especially in my city of Montreal to the point that I used to drive two hours to go to events and get stuff. And Drew was a big help in me being able to get some product because whew, it was difficult, let me tell you. So thank you again, Drew. I, I can't say it enough from the bottom of my heart how much of a help you were for me for being able, being able to participate in this community despite the fact that I didn't have the opportunities locally to, uh, to enjoy it. I continue, sorry. We are grateful to all our fans, content creators, retailers, and distributors for the enthusiasm they brought over the game. The Greater Transformer TCG fan community is perhaps the best TCG community we've had the privilege of working with till all are one. Thank you again, Drew, for everything and being helpful. He was, again, the brand manager, and he would talk a lot with the fans and stuff, and we had a good relationship of communication, and it was just awesome. It was just awesome, and... I have a lot like I'm just going to go through just I'm going to do a little little just a small little quick history of our beautiful TCG and then I'll, I'll top it off with some final thoughts. And so back in July of 2018 at both Gen Con and San Diego Comic Con, the big announcement came from Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast that they were going to be making a Transformers trading card game. And up to that point, there had been other Transformer trading card games, but they were really met with very lukewarm to non-existent attention. Transformer 3D trading card game comes to mind. Before that, even the Beast Wars mutating card game, which had a very limited uh, starter pack run with no additional expansion beyond that. Again, weird timing, no community, but that was that. Uh, when this announcement started in July 2018, they actually had the Slipstream promo pack, which was worth a lot of money for the longest time. And that was kind of people's first taste of it. The game would actually make its full Wave 1 debut uh, September 28th, 2018. And you were able to get booster packs. You were able to get starter decks. It was like, a, you know, theme decks. It was all really cool stuff. Five months later, March 1st, 2019 was Rise of the Combiners, which introduced the combiner mechanic and the folding cards, which were really cool. And it was also, you know, you know, selfishly for me, the first time we got a hot rod card. So I was pretty excited about that to finally get a hot rod card of any kind. Uh, almost four months after that, we then had on June 28th, 2019, the War for Cybertron Siege Part 1 which introduced both Battle Masters, or like we could call them Target Masters, and the Micromaster uh, character concept, which was another little wrinkle to the game. 
and added an extra, you know, dynamic to the all kinds of different things. At that point also, it was the beginning of original art being used for it, not just using the uh, previously all the character art at that point was using art from the cell phone Transformer Legends game, which had a whole bunch of art from that. And a lot of the battle cards were using like IDW comic panel art and stuff. But this was the first time we had a lot of original art and a lot of great art came from that too. So that was really cool. And then barely like three months after that, in November 8th, 2019, we had War for Cybertron Siege 2. And I see it more, even though it's an expansion, it's almost like it was like the second half of a DLC in a lot of sense, because uh, it, it what it did was it took a lot of the same ideas from Siege before with the Battle Masters and the Micromasters, brought back the Combiner idea from Rise of the Combiners with Omega Supreme being a Combiner kind of... Uh, figure but what was introduced with this one was it started the concept of like it was a, a, a box topper like kind of concept that magic does magic the gathering where if you bought a booster box during the release day like a certain window you could get a special triptychon you know kind of thing too so that was really cool also and some bonus figures also so cool box topper idea was also introduced and then the final expansion which was supposed to come originally april of 2020 but because of the big v wizards pushed it back uh to kind of protect that and they moved it all the way to may 29th of 2020 but even though they pushed it back the world still didn't really get its bearings and sales were still hit hard and it wasn't just the transformer tcg everyone suffered during that time we didn't really we thought the world was going to get back together and every every 3 weeks or 4 weeks we thought you know maybe we'll we'll be we be we'll be fine next month or maybe next month and it just kept getting worse and the tcg was hit hard from it uh there was already a little bit of decline of interest i saw within uh certain transformer tcg collector groups that i was part of people were already kind of getting out of the tcg and selling their collections by already by siege 2 and stuff so long before the big v happened and titan masters uh titan masters attack i already saw people kind of leaving the game at that point uh but this set what it introduced introduced the uh the titan master or the headmaster gimmick as i like to call it with the head and body concept along with the stratagem wrinkle which added a whole different dynamic too uh we had box toppers again return and this time it was fortress maximus and his crew again a purchase of a booster box and also tons and easily Titan Masters Attack had some of the best battle card and original card art this time around. Uh, we were introduced to characters like Night Racer that up to that point was really just a BotCon exclusive kind of character. So for her to get a card and that was really cool to be part of that story. And then there was like great art cards like Josh Perez did a card called Turn the Tide, which had like if you that is easily it's a common too, but it's like no, I think it was an uncommon I think it was an uncommon, but it was like easily one of the best cards in terms of art, where it had like Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime, uh, G2 GoBots, G2 GoBots Sideswipe, Animated Bulkhead, it had Minerva on there. Like just it opened up the door to what could be the future of the Transformers TCG just by that art alone. And I love that card, you know, like a lot of cool stuff going on there uh, just from an art perspective. But it was it was an amazing TCG, and the community was very strong, and we would have events at both uh, TFCon and local events that I would drive two hours to. Shout out to uh, Jonathan and, of course, um, Larry. You know, I, I was hesitant to use their full names, but <laughs> John and Larry, uh, Ultra Maverick and uh, Black Dragon, their screen names online. We used to take the big trek and uh drive two hours to ottawa play the tcg go to opening and launch party events and everything good stuff gonna miss it gonna miss it definitely uh what could have been done differently that's that's the big question and and i know people are gonna ask me that anyways but what would i have done differently and i always feel like anything in life it's always about timing and hindsight is 2020 obviously let me just get a little more comfortable here because it's going to be a little bit of a rant you know hindsight is 2020 but the reality is is that when you kind of have an idea of what transformers is going to be doing in the long run just looking outside of the game uh you got to look at the mainstream stuff and how you could kind of fold to that 
And that's how you kind of create that bridge to build a stronger fan base. Now, I think one of the big mistakes that they made, and I don't know what the uh, design date was, but when they did the Siege stuff and calling it the Transformer Siege stuff, especially Siege 1 and Siege 2, I would have all, honestly almost saved that title and that kind of branding for when the Netflix series came out. Because Netflix is a big entity. We can't deny it. And I've said many times on the podcast and previous segments how that Netflix Transformers Siege TV series is going to be a strong reflection on the future on how Transformers is going to be handled from a animation and mainstream audience brand considering that it's also going to be aimed at a slightly older audience, which is what a lot of TCG players are. The average TCG player is ages 15, 16, and above. It's very rare that it's below that. Usually you see, like, the youngest I've ever seen is, like, late teens, mid to late teens. So it's something that I felt that, granted, there is a development process and a playtesting process, and it's sometimes it's very hard to do the timing. And Wizards of the Coast has this thing where every three to four months you got to put out new product, you got to put out new expansions. So I understand the difficulty of that. But when you kind of also know how that process is, you could kind of probably plot out how you want to do your storytelling and how you want to do your, your taking advantage of what is going on in the other dynamics and playing into that. Look, we can't deny, I'm not going to use Magic as an example because they were the OG, so they they survive strongly just because they're the OG. They're the original gangsta. But Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and Pokemon, their success came from the perfect timing of outside marketing from a cartoon leading to people funneling towards the game. So people were going to be funneled to the Transformers TCG because they were Transformer fans, but you got to also cater it to a wider demographic where what is going on right now in the current product of the Transformers, you got to kind of lean towards that. Now, I'm not saying the movie stuff because you could alienate people with the movie stuff, even though that's probably one of the strongest mainstream demographics, but at least in terms of television series and things like that, that could have been one way to go about it. Again, hey, Wizards, if you ever want to kind of have a little talk and we could definitely figure out a way to bring this back maybe in three to five years if the license comes up again. But it's something that has to be considered in the future when it comes to the marketing of it. Look, I've seen tons... Anyone who's been listening to me talking about the TCG, we have a playlist of me talking about the Transformers TCG literally from its launch day until today. And one of the biggest things that I always said over and over is that if you're not part of that holy trinity of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Magic, um, you literally have a shelf date of either six months to a year and maybe two expansion sets, whether it be Star Wars, Marvel, all these big brands. G.I. Joe had his TCG. All these big brands that have all of this following. DC had one, too. X-Files, like I could just go on and on. But it even though you have these big brands, you have to have the player base and you have to have to figure out a way to funnel those fans into the player base. They could be Transformer fans, but they might not necessarily be TCG fans. And so you have to figure out the way to bridge that gap. My friend Larry, who was playing TCG, he wasn't someone that was playing Pokemon. He wasn't someone that was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or anything like that, but he was intrigued by this because of the Transformers brand. And so while you could get guys like Larry, who are, you know, part of that outside world of the TCG, and bring him in using the brand, you also got to bring in people from other walks of life too, including pre-existing TCG players of Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! that would find a dynamic with that. And you got to use the outside influences, the Netflix series, the TV series, you got to use that stuff. And when you have a development time, and hopefully because it's made with WotC, because it's made Wizard of the Coast, you could have some kind of conversation with Hasbro and go, hey, what are you guys doing in the next five to six months? Because we want this all to line up. And that's how I would go about it. It's 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 literally the the secret to success when it comes to getting a new audience because you can't rely on the old audience forever because the problem with an old audience is that it pretty much falls apart. It degrades over time. You lose people because of lack of interest. You lose people because of funds. You lose people just because something happens in their life or in the case of what happened in the real world with the big V. So you got to always create a new audience because 
you can't hold on to the old audience because you lose them slowly. It is what it is. And it's a shame that it's over, but the one good thing, and as, as someone myself who's a humongous Transformer trading card game player, but also a huge TCG player as all, I still go to every Magic event. I still Magic buy Magic the Gathering cards regularly all the time. I have Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I have Pokemon. I'm, I've, I'm a big TCG player person. And the one thing that I've noticed with dead TCGs, whether it be Overpower or Animayhem or some of them that have been dead for, no joke, some of them over 15 to 20 years, uh, there still is player bases for them. So my belief is even though this is over, hopefully the player base will still exist and people will still want to play. Maybe, you know, next TFCon coming up, even though the game is over, we still have a fairly fresh expansion as of May that not a lot of people were able to get. So hopefully by the time TFCon rolls around uh, next year in 2021, we'll, uh, we'll be able to run one final get-together and see how the turnout is, see how the player base is. Hopefully not too many people are going to now get off the boat now that it has started to sink. But it's a shame, and I really hope for all for the best for the future with these guys. I hope that Drew finds, uh, finds work and business within WotC and does some great work because he was extremely helpful. And anyone from the TCG that's listening, Drew was a very useful individual and very helpful within the brand. Uh, so all the best to him and all the guys at the Transformer TCG. And hopefully in the future, maybe again, maybe three, five years from now, we could all talk again and create something new for a whole new future. But right now, we're in a crazy place in the world. Be good to each other. It's a crazy place right now. Take care of yourself. Be safe. And be happy.